Hi guys, welcome back to Fashion School with Nick Varios. Ever wondered how you go from here to here? Well, today I'm going to show you the 10 steps to take you from sketch to finished gown. Okay, so the very first step in coming up with your design is the sketch. And I always begin with doing a lot of quick sketches. It's sort of like my work in progress. It's like I sketch it and I'm like, oh, does it have a short sleeve? No, 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 I want a long cascade. Oh, do I want asymmetrical hem? All of those changes happen in the quick sketches until I have that aha moment that it's the final design. Now, when I have that moment, I do a really fancy, nice sketch, a fashion illustration with color, and I use that for my collection board, kind of like what you see behind me. I also use that sketch for like um, Instagram, because it looks really pretty. All right, next step, draping. So here we are, step two, draping. So this is the drape of my sketch. And a lot of you will be familiar with this because this is an example of what I show you in my draping videos. So you'll be like, I recognize that. Now, if my design, my sketch, my idea is a symmetrical dress, a symmetrical garment, meaning the right side is the same as the left, I usually only drape one side. And it's usually this side, the right side, because what's the point? I'm wasting muslin, all right? So you see all the marks here, as you can see the dart, the neckline. And what I love about draping is a lot of times my ideas can change because of my drape. You know, I might have sketched a certain kind of neckline, but then all of a sudden as I'm draping, this is why I love draping, it's so creative. Your, your creativity starts like bubbling when you're draping. So you can be like, you know what? I'm changing that. And so this is what's great about the drape. So, and I drape in the muslin, as you can see, the muslin is very similar to my finished fabric which will eventually be a silk duchess fabrication all right so make sure to use something that is similar so that's why I use the muslin now after the drape you go on to step three which is the pattern so what do I do I take the pieces of the muslin of my drape and I put them onto pattern paper so right here is the pattern for this drape and these are the pattern papers. You see them right here, a lot of patterns, big patterns, because it's a big gown skirt. And then I also do a little technical sketch, as you can see as well. So then these are the patterns. And now it's time for step four. So what do I do? I take these paper patterns and I cut them, and I cut them into in muslin. So then I take muslin right here, and I lay it out. I lay my pattern papers, pin them, and I cut them out. Why? Because I'm going to get ready to go to step five, which is what? Sewing the first sample. Sewing the muslin. So here in step five, I've sewn up my muslin right here. So it's a full gown. Remember the drape? I only did half of it. But when I sewed the muslin, the first sample, step five, I did the whole gown. Now in this step, you also make your corrections. You have a fitting. So you fix everything. All right. As you can see, I've marked everything. See the marks? I lowered this ampere. I pinched in. I took from the shoulder. Now, ideally, you want to do that on a real box. You want to have a model that you can fit this muslin in, but if not, you can do it on the form and that can help you a little bit, but definitely make those corrections. Now, this is why it's so important to actually just use this cheap fabric for your first sample because you have to make all these corrections. Imagine if you had to do all these corrections and you sewed up in a final fabric that is $80, $100 a yard. You'd be like, oh! Okay, so that's why we use the cheap muslin for this, okay? After this, you're ready for step six. What is that? You want to correct your pattern. So what I do is I take my pattern, you see right here, and I fix it. So if I had to take off the shoulders, I take off the shoulders in the pattern. Lower the neckline, lower the neckline in the pattern. Fix it. All right, after you fixed your corrections in the pattern, you're ready for step seven. Now a lot of people think, well, okay, I'm ready to do the finished gown. No, back it down, go uh, uh, uh. What's step seven? You sew another muslin. <laughs> you do another sample. That's what I like to do. And sometimes I like to do another one and another one and another one. I just want to make sure it's right, especially if there are a lot of corrections. If you only have like one or two corrections in your first sample, then probably you want to skip step seven. But if not, 
so a second or a third or fourth or fifth sample. Okay? Now you can be ready for step eight. In step eight, we cut in the actual fabric. Yay! Finally! <laughs> so here is my actual fabric that is going to be used for the final gown. Um, this is Silk Duchess, Duchess Satin. You can see right here there's a shiny side, a matte side. And this is Silk Zebeline. Very fancy, very expensive. This is why I didn't use this for the first sample. This is the final garment, all right? So you cut the pieces. Here's an example, one of the cut pieces. This is a back. And if you need to do your interfacing, your fusing, you do all that in this step, all right? And once you finish cutting all the pieces in the final fabric for the final gown, then you're ready for step nine. And that is you give it to your seamstress or sewer. If you happen to be your own seamstress or sewer, then you hand it off to yourself. <laughs> but I like to give it to my seamstress because I need to move on to start creating the next gown, my next sketches. So while she's making magic creating that gown, I'm making future magic, all right? Now you're ready for step 10, the final gown. And here it is. Now you have your final gown. Oh, ain't she pretty? So there you have it. The 10 steps it takes to create a garment. Hope that helped. Thanks for tuning in to Fashion School with Nick Berrios. Now don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And for more Nick tips and tricks, get my book, A Passion for Fashion. It's available on Amazon.com.